Hello, my name's Mike, and thanks for joining us in this episode of Let's Live Code. Last time, we got started with Title Cycles, which is a front end for live coding in Super Collider. At the end of the episode, we were able to loop a sample once every second. This was called a cycle. Um, now, in this episode, we're going to be looking at creating patterns inside of cycles so we can specify specific rhythms. Before we do that, though, let's go ahead and look at how to load in our own samples into Title Cycles. On my desktop, I've created a folder that's named KC, and inside it, there's a lo-fi kick sound. I can play that right now. To use this file inside Title Cycles directory, we're going to go back to Super Collider, where the files live, and open up File, Open User Support Directory. From here, we're going to go click on Downloaded Quirks. And from downloaded quirks, we're going to click on dirt samples. And this opens up the library that we had last episode where we could see all of our files. We're simply going to drag and drop our folder into the file. We can see it's there. We can hear it. Great. We should be ready to go. Make sure that you do all of this uh, before you start the SuperDirt engine so SuperDirt can recognize that the file is there. We're going to go ahead and start it and wait for SuperCollider to realize that SuperDirt is listening to title. And then we're going to go ahead and open up our Make GUI and start recording the output of this. Okay, back into Title Cycles then. Uh, we can call this sample up by saying D1 dollar sign sound and then the folder name, which was KC. During the last episode, uh, we had four on the floor. You can simply do that by putting four KCs. And we also created another stream through D2 uh, that had eight hi-hats that were playing alongside our four kicks. Now I bring this example back up because I wanted to show that we can turn off any of these steps by simply using the tilde character, uh, which creates a rest and preserves the spacing. To do this is simply enter a tilde sign instead of KC. Now, just a word on naming conventions. Uh, whatever you end up labeling your file as, remember that that's what you're going to have to type in order to execute it later. So I usually have two rules of thumb. One, keep it short but memorable so you can bring the code back later at a moment's notice. So in musical terms, if that makes more sense for you, um, the example below I'm going to show you is a measure of 4-4 four, four with quarter notes on every downbeat. And that's what that would sound like. Uh, if we were to look at what that rhythm would look like written out, it would look like the following. But let's suppose for a second that we wanted to subdivide the third beat into two different eighth notes. In title, we do that through the use of square brackets. To make a triplet, I would simply enter in another KC. So the brackets really let us create a cycle within a cycle. And we could take this idea one step further. Let's say we wanted to create a measure of 6-8 with continuous eighth notes. And we can put our kick drum on the downbeats and have hi-hats on the offbeats. So to do that, we're going to use square brackets to separate each one of the beats. And this, we will put our kick drum to create our downbeats. And we can separate our hi-hats out now. So now we have beat 1 and 2. And now we have the full measure of 6-8. So now that we got the idea of it, let's go ahead and look at some other examples.
And just a shortcut, if you highlight the samples and then press the left bracket, title will automatically encapsulate it. You can even nest groups inside of groups to create increasingly dynamic and complex patterns. So let's look at that using this example that we had from above. Now looking at the example above, it can be a little bit hard to see where one beat starts and one beat stops uh, because you're using square brackets for everything. So a shorthand for this kind of group is to place a period between the groups rather than surrounding them in square brackets. And we call this technique marking our feet. So if we were to use this example, we have a kick drum, we have two of them on the first beat, three snare drums in the second, and two hi-hats. And you can see that that works out really nicely. Um, if we were to use the other notation for that, which we can do just fine, um, let me go ahead and replace this with some brackets. And it's easy to tell that that is the exact same pattern from before. Um, let's take our kick drum example from above and re-notate that by using marking our feet. So to do that, we would have KC, KC, period and then we would go ahead and put our groupings for the second beat in there. So we have something that ends up looking a little bit like this. And I evaluated line one just so you could tell that the pattern would be exactly the same. Okay, so having one pattern to play music is great, but it's also really helpful to be able to group multiple patterns onto a single line of code. So to do this, um, we would achieve that in title by using commas inside of square brackets. So let's look at this uh, example here. I'm going to start with square brackets and then hi-hat, clap, hi-hat, clap, comma, and now we'll have a bass drum, kick, kick, bass drum, kick. Okay, so that's kind of a fun example. Uh, the first sequence only has four events and the second sequence only has five. Because title ensures that both loops fit inside the same cyclic duration, you end up with a polyrhythm, in this case four against five. Uh, this is something that title really excels at. If you want to create interesting structures, title makes an integral part in how it works. So if you're someone who's interested in synchronizing polyrhythmic structures, this should be pretty exciting for you. Of course, you don't just have to limit yourself to two elements. Um, let's go ahead and bring in another element. I'm going to add in some hi-hats here so they play at the same time. All right, so the next thing I want to look at is being able to play or specify a specific sample during a step of a cycle and have it change throughout the cycle. So to do that, I'm going to play a different pattern that is KC, metal, feel, and then we'll have a stream of notes that are KC, KC, BD, BD. Let's say I'm going to play a pattern where I want to specify that metal starts on the second sample but then moves to another sample. Right now to achieve this, I have to actually code it in real time. To specify a specific pattern to happen within a cycle, we can do that by using the greater than less than sign. So I'm going to go ahead and put a less than sign in front of metal. And then I'm going to go ahead and specify the samples that I want. So maybe I want metal zero, or maybe I want another metal. Let me go ahead and copy this over here. Say metal four, and then metal, I don't know, five, metal one. And we're going to go ahead and bracket this out. And you can clearly hear that it is cycling through those indexes. 
Now I don't have to limit myself to just cycling metal, I can also cycle another one. Let's go ahead and take feel and cycle through three different samples in the feel folder. And now it's cycling through each of the different indexes um, specified. And what's kind of nice about this is that it's not going to repeat itself completely until it's reached the lowest common multiple between indexes, which in this case between uh, 5 and 3 is 15. So 15 cycles have to repeat before we get a continuation. All right, that's all for this episode. Thank you for joining us. Uh, next time, we're going to focus on way to sort of simplify repetitions and ways that we can transform patterns at large. Thanks for joining us, and I hope to see you on the next episode of Let's Live Code.